News Radio 700 WLW. This is a weird situation here, Jace. Yes. And uh, you have it in front. Explain what, what we're talking about here. Well, Lamar Jackson, quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, is trying to trademark uh, his jersey number eight. Right. Um, well, Troy Aikman also has tried to do that as well. Uh, so Lamar Jackson is – actually, Troy Aikman's trying to do that currently. So uh, Lamar Jackson is challenging – uh, Troy, Pro Football Hall of Famer Troy Aikman's use of their shared number eight in a U.S. Patent and Trademark Office complaint. This is official. This isn't just them squabbling each other in the media. This is an official complaint uh, with the U.S. government. Well, here to uh, explain the ins and outs of all this, because this is, if it wasn't so weird, John Risby, it'd be, it would be funny. But what what's you, can you argue? Can you try to copyright? And by the way, John's the patent professor. Can you trademark a number or pat, or in this case, copyright? I reckon. Yeah. So a lot of people are surprised at what can be uh, what's entitled to trademark protection. Uh, like anything that identifies the source of a of a product or a service uh, can be uh, trademarked. Uh, Typically, we think of names and logos, and, and that's uh, that standard. However, you can trademark a sound. NBC has their chime trademarked. You can trademark a color. You've got the Klondike ice cream bar. They have a specific shade of blue. Oh, wow. uh, a lot of perfume companies have trademarked the smell of their <laughs> perfume. Anything that, that uh, for consumers, they identify with a particular uh, company, a particular manufacturer or a source. So certainly a, a, it seems strange, like who can own a number? Like, you know, like uh, it right. seems as if Lamar Jackson is saying, I had the number eight jersey, so I own the number eight. Uh, but he, under trademark law, if he uses uh, uh, number eight in a way that identifies a uh, source of goods or services, then he absolutely has uh, exclusive legal rights to that. And that's uh, that's why his, his filings have been approved. He has two filings. One is you ate yet, and it's for restaurant services, and the eight is a numerical number eight. And the other one is era eight, and that's for clothing and bags uh, uh, as well. Uh, now, there wouldn't be a problem if Troy Aikman, who also had the number eight jersey for the Dallas Cowboys for several years, and he's, uh, of course, uh, brought them to several – uh, Super Bowl championships with it as well. Uh, so he, he's also associated with the number eight, but he didn't file first. And under trademark law, you either start selling goods and services or you file a federal application. And Lamar Jackson definitely is in a stronger position because he filed his application first and is now opposing uh, Troy Aikman's application. So Troy's applied as well. Uh, with a slight change, he's spelling out the number eight instead of a numerical eight. It's E-I-G-H-T. But under trademark law, that, that's typically not enough to avoid consumer confusion. Wow. This this really blows me away. And even when you expand that out to a color, you can trademark a color, uh, which just – so, like, let's say if I wanted to start a company, I don't know, called Eddie 8, like, would that – would I have to – get permission from whoever wins this case, like Troy Aikman or uh, Lamar Jackson, to use the number eight in any way in any official business capacity, even though it's, so, yeah. Yeah, good point. So here, here's an interesting twist, though. Like, trademarks are, are, are field-specific. So uh, that's why, for example, you can have Dove, they, and the company owns a trademark for chocolate, and it's a chocolate company, but there's also Dove for uh, beauty products and soap, and and, yep. and they both coexist. You've got Delta Airlines, and they own Delta for uh, air travel, and you have Delta faucets for ah, bathroom yeah. fixtures. You got Delta and Dental too. Co That's a dental, yeah. Right. Yeah, and you're right, a hundred percent. And the dental company, Delta Dental, and they own it for their case. The problem here is that both Troy and Lamar are uh, trying to get protection. For the same class of goods, basically clothing. So there's a lot of, of overlap. Ah, gotcha. Uh, uh, so as to your question, if you could get Eddie Eight, it you know it has to be uh, a class of goods that that consumers are not confused with. So 
something else. So certainly, I think if you go into clothing, it, you'd have problems. Um, uh, Troy Aikman has uses eight for a beer. One of his filings is for beer, so you can't you can't sell beer under Eddie Eight. But you know, car tires, for example, uh, just just throwing that out there like that that seems to be available. Well, I'm going to come up with my own brand of car tires and maybe make a little dough on the side. Um, the, the Eddie Eight. But yeah, the, I don't know why. I just I was thinking more along the lines of food or restaurant or something like Eddie Eight. So but, yeah, and we're talking to John Risby, the uh, patent professor. And so, John, how do you think this plays out? It it sounds like you think that Lamar Jackson's got the uh, he's got the upper hand here. Yeah, he certainly has filed first. So, you know, sports fans are, they may be looking at this as in terms of like who deserves it, right? So, Lamar Jackson, he's relatively young. He's still building his brand. And on the other hand, you've got powerhouse Troy Aikman that uh, has been to three Super Bowls before Lamar was even born. And they might be looking at, hey, you know what? We think Troy is should be the number eight. But unfortunately, the law does not look at it that way. They look at who filed first, uh, and Lamar Jackson has filed first, or in some cases who used first in the case of common law trademarks. But if you file first, you've got a, a huge superior position, and anybody that comes later on uh, uh, cannot have a confusingly similar mark. And it's not just changing a numerical eight and spelling it out I, I, is, is not enough to avoid confusion. Okay. And this isn't the first time a number has been trademarked, by the way. Nike owns the number 23 uh, for hats ah. and T-shirts and, and sweatshirts uh, because of their relationship with Michael Jordan. So there's, this, this is not unprecedented. So Lamar Jackson is, has some solid ground for his filing and, and for opposing Troy's trademarks. So what you're saying, John, then if, let's say I wanted to start a athletic apparel or sporting goods store on 23rd Street and – downtown atlanta or whatever i don't know i couldn't call it 23 like and spell it out 23 and just i i, I couldn't yeah, do that right yeah no way like t-w-e-n-t-y like that's not going to be enough to avoid consumer confusion because again it's uh overlaps with with clothing right now right. again if you want <laughs> going back to the car tire example you want to create car tires call them 23 uh, you might have a chance because now you can argue that consumers aren't going to be confused because they're thinking the 23 is associated That's with, uh, you know, with Nike. Although you might still be in trouble because 23 is just so ingrained with Michael Jordan and Nike. Nike might still oppose and say, hey, consumers think that we yeah. are expanding into car tires. Yeah, and uh, Nike uh, seem is. <laughs> From everything I've heard and everything I've seen, Nike's a little protective of everything they own, and they go after yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yep. What, so what, you're, you're, in fact, very very likely to get an opposition uh, for 23. In fact, maybe no matter what field you are, you, you file in, because Nike's now just it's, it's, it's a company that's gone in so many different directions that consumers might have reason to think that they are – the ones behind that product. So if you have car tires sold under 23, they may make the assumption consumers might, and Nike would have to show that, that consumers are confused and they think now, you know, that the, the shoes are so great for running. Uh, I bet the tires are terrific on cars too, and they're buying the tires because they associate 23 with Nike. Could could this start a trend? I could see, you know, I mean, and I'm, I'm just using these as an example. Joe Burrow is a famous number nine. Could Joe Burrow and whoever else wears number nine starts saying, oh, I got nine. And then, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes has 15. And could you see something like this starting a trend? I mean, you would think makes sense. it seems like, yeah, it would make sense. Uh, we haven't oh, seen yeah, a lot of it, but yet, like, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, or if well, you wanted well, to do other things. Because it's an additional uh, line of income, right? Like, they don't just have to rely on their uh, compensation from playing. It could be uh, sales of merchandise. In fact, I'm thinking, what do all the other people? There's a lot of other people who, with, who had jerseys with the number eight. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, for example, in the New York Jets. Steve Young from Steve the San, Young, Francisco, yeah. San Francisco 49ers. Like all these guys, and it's not just football. You've got Cal Ripken uh, uh, from the Boston Orioles having uh, number eight, and Kobe Bryant had the number eight jersey for years for the Los Angeles Lakers. Like all these number eights, 
and they're probably wondering, hey, you know what? We didn't file. We didn't protect it. Mm. Uh, uh, good for Lamar Jackson for, for seeing the potential and, and filing before anybody else. So what you're saying is in, like, those guys, like, they can't now – or, well, obviously Kobe Bryant could or maybe his, uh, his estate could – uh, but w- like Cal Ripken or uh, some of those other famous number eights couldn't now come in and get in on this and try right. to fight for their own thing, or they're they're basically yeah, they're out of they're out of the picture now. Yeah, so uh, Lamar Jackson would have a really strong case for opposing their trademark, gotcha. saying that that consumers are confused and basically asking the, the trademark office to reject anyone else's filing. All right. Well, fascinating stuff, as always. John Rizvi, the Patton Professor, we appreciate it, man. As always, people want to find out more. Where can they go? Yeah, so uh, our website, thepattonprofessor.com, and that's our handle pretty much anywhere. You go to Facebook, The Patton Professor, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter. Just type in The Patton Professor or pattonprofessor.com, and you'll find us. So if we go to TikTok, are you going to be there, like, dabbing and stuff and doing some kind of a dance, or uh, what's going to happen there, Jim? <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll find a lot you, 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 <laughs> cases that um, – you'll find a lot of cases. You won't find me dancing on, on TikTok yet. Uh, dan- dancing in a number eight Lamar Jackson jersey Bingo. Would, be, would be awesome. See how, <laughs> see how long it takes to draw the lawyer flies. Uh, John, thanks so much, man. Of course. Take care. Take care. Always a pleasure. Thank you.